Okay, if you guys have not had the opportunity to watch my anatomy streams, you'll know that I'm a big fan of major masses and bony landmarks. And that's what I'm doing right now. I'm trying to block out the entire figure within the first 30 seconds. Okay, now I don't like how far to the right this is. So I'm just gonna redraw the torso all the way over here. So that way I can see the arm a little bit better. And that then pushes this down and I need to indicate a little bit of the foot. Now I know some of you guys don't like that I draw so light and that you can't see the lines, but you know something? That is part of the process. That is something you guys are gonna have to get used to because I need to draw light in order to figure out and to approximate where things really are. So guys have to get used to it. <laughs> if anything, I think the more important thing is that you guys are really paying attention to the movements because I do that with students a lot in my classroom where I really critique their movements more than I actually do the drawing, which you might say is somewhat unfair. But wow, if you guys watch somebody draw, you can tell if they're paying attention or not. It's pretty clear. And I just found that to be a really good indicator. As I'm drawing, if you guys have questions, things you want to comment upon, let me know in the chat. Dorinka is in the chat today, so you guys can ask her for some help as well. But I will stop, I would say, every two or three drawings so that way I can take a look at questions. So I will be doing that. I just can't do that while I'm actually drawing. Okay. Crap, sorry, my head's getting in the way. I'm gonna try to uh, prevent you guys from having a, a view of my head, which is really not that exciting. So, okay, we're gonna start to plug in some bony landmarks. I'm already seeing the elbow here. I'm trying to get in the wrist, or at least try to locate where the wrist is. Palm, not the palm, the back of the hand. And actually the kneecap, I did not make it big enough. So I'm gonna to try to get that a little bit more substantial, hint a little bit at the ankle bone. I made the foot way too small the first time through. And this guy has a weirdly long neck. Like, I don't know, maybe it's the photographs that they were using back then, I don't know. Center line not happening, really need to work on that. And this arm disappeared because I was off here yakking. Okay, so not warmed up. That's okay, 13 seconds to go at least indicate the ear. The most important thing is that you warm up and then you get the whole body in place. I don't really care about the rest of it. Okay, at the very least, you can say, you know what, the whole figure is down. There we go. Okay, so that's my first warm up. So not in the headspace yet. Okay, let's go. Let's see who we have up next. I believe that we have Robert Maplethorpe. If you guys do not know Robert Maplethorpe's work, you should definitely look him up. He's an incredible photographer and he does gorgeous photos of nudes. So we're gonna start with this one. This one, again, I'm also going to do three minutes because I feel like, oh man, I really need the time. <laughs> Sorry, I think my I budged my timer a little bit. Okay, here we go, come on, go back, go back. Okay, here, okay, that's not perfect. Okay, there we go, <laughs> three minutes, okay. Here we go. All right. I was not moving fast enough. I was a little bit slow. So I'm gonna pick up the pace because I was lazy on that last pose. I was not truly focused. That head's way too big, but you know what, too bad. That's okay. <laughs> yeah, re really dramatic bend in this figure so much more dramatic than I nailed it at first. And let's at least block and see, I got lazy. I didn't get down to the feet fast enough. Feet are all the way down here. That looks gigantic, not good. And then draw the stool guys. I know sometimes people think, oh, well, the thing that they're sitting on, it doesn't matter. It does <laughs> because if the whole weight of the entire figure is sitting on that one structure, you better believe that that structure matters. So don't, no, none of this thing where you guys draw these like floating people who are clearly in seated positions that are not seated on anything. I think that's a bad idea. Okay. Now, whoa, not good. Okay, he looks like a marshmallow. That is not good. Dude, you are so much more slender 
that I am making you. So let's, oh my God, this back, sheesh, that is not good. Okay, let's, let's get the ear in. The ear really helps. Like, I'm not really trying to draw it. I'm just trying to put it somewhere. And I find that very helpful. Uh, and actually what I would do for a pose like this, guys, just draw the thigh right through the body because it's so many body parts, like one thing on top of another. And it's so much faster for you guys to just go in and draw it over something. Just draw through it, straight through it. Who cares if you're messing up your drawing? It doesn't matter. I'm going to have a much better understanding of what this looks like because I drew right through things. Okay. Let's push that back. And then actually, whoa, the stool is like way back there. So I need to push that back. And then there's a very dramatic shadow coming down here. And I'm not even going to try with the brow because that's so not happening right now. That's fine. I am starting to get a little bit more worked up, which is good. And I am starting to block in a little bit more of the hand. So it's a little bit less embarrassing and whew, 26 seconds. Okay. I feel like I'm at the gym. You guys ever go to figure drawing class and you're like, Oh man, I don't have to go to the gym. I feel like really pumped right now. <laughs> it's a very physical experience. I think a lot of people don't realize just how physical of a workout it can be to draw the figure. Okay. Five seconds. That's it. Okay. Now I think I'm ready to settle down just a little bit more. So let me do a five minute pose. Let's get five minutes. And let's go with our good friend, Alfred Steiglitz, who is a wonderful artist. He actually, I forget if he was married to Georgia O'Keeffe, but they definitely had a relationship. I can't remember what it was, but it's, um, cool, all these little nuggets of art history that you get. Okay, so this is gonna be a five minute pose and hopefully I'll have a little bit more time for this drawing to not look like total crap. <laughs> That's okay. Guys, here's the tally. You guys can count today how many times I say crap during this stream. Let's see who can figure it out, okay? All right, here we go. Five minutes, Alfred Stieglitz, Stieglitz? I have no idea. Okay, here we go. Major masses. Rib cage, center line, pelvis, which actually is quite tilted. And then this leg, thighs, another tilt back here. So all those angles, you guys, those really, really matter. Okay, the hair is making it not so easy for me because it's like a big blob right now, but at the very least, it'll help me place the hand going off. Okay, let's go back. I totally screwed up the center line. The center line should be more like, ugh. Not like that, more like this, no. Okay, here we go. Let's try to get the pelvis in a little bit better. Try to separate the thighs. Cause you know what? I think a lot of people tend to squish the pelvis. I think that's really common and I just did that myself. So there's usually much more going on there than you think. Now I think I made it too big. Okay, whatever, we'll just figure it out later. <laughs> this is all just, a work in progress. And the photo is making it really hard for me to see that leg. So sorry about that. I just can't, it's like totally black. Nothing to see there. And ooh, this is, whoa, what am I? Oh crap. Okay, so here we go. We have, no, 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 no. Slowing down too much. Don't do that, don't do that. Okay, here we go. Let's get the flexion folds, which by the way, we have not gone over the flexion folds just yet but I will get to those eventually. Okay, now I'm fussing. Let's go back up here. I got to pop back up to this arm, which I really ignored. And you know what? She looks like tapioca. This is not good. I'm making her way blobbier than she actually is. Her form is a lot more subtle than I'm making it. And I think I'm doing not so hot in that arena. Let's just give her some shoulder blades. I think that's a pretty good reference. And I'm going to do a little bit of tone, not very much, just a little something because the shadows in this are pretty dramatic. And I think for a pose like this, it's not a good idea to do no tone at all. So just to put in a, a little rug here and I'll explain to you guys once I stop and take a break, exactly what I mean by a rug of tone. You're going to hear me say that about 80,000 times today, but that's the term that I use to explain 
the relationship between line and tone. Oh, see this? Like I had the crease of the backside going this way and it's like totally this way. Sheesh, how did I, that is not a good look for me. All right, here we go. Let's get, oh geez, what am I doing? Okay, hang on a second. I think the backside is lower here and then this protrudes and then it's really hard to see that this photo is not great in terms of giving me all the information that I want. Now I feel like I'm being too aggressive. I, I should slow down a little bit. This is not great. Okay, this gastrocnemius muscle, it's pretty significant. Oh, wait, but then there's no space for this. How does that work? Okay, oh, wait, 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 wait. Okay, here we go. Let's get in more of this muscle. I think I'm slowing down too much, even so. And then, okay, that's more like the soleus muscle, which comes down. Okay, now I'm fussing. Don't fuss, don't let yourself fuss, guys. Not good. Okay. Oh, all right, let's let's do this. <laughs> I'm, I'm determined. You know something, after the last stream that you guys watched me do for the anatomy stream, I was so mortified by the drawings that I, I literally, I had a part of myself that was like, I can do better. I should just redo all of this. And then I'll post drawings that look way better than these. And then everybody's gonna think I can actually do what I'm talking about. Like these are the things that go through your head. That's, I think that's how self-critical so many of us are. It's like, we can't just let it go. And the thing is, here I am telling all of you guys, it's okay let it go <laughs> move on do a new drawing and here i am like i can't move on like this is exactly story of my life okay Th this you know what? it's too far to the right okay here we go two butt creases see that i bet you guys didn't know that was possible in figure drawing but apparently it is so here we go two creases of the backside because i can't keep things straight apparently and just to get a little tone in there let's just kick it up a notch I'm not happy, guys. I am not happy. But you know what? It, it's part of the process, right? Right? It's part of the process. Okay. Okay. Give me my advice back to myself. That's what Lauren Welch likes to do here at Art Prof. She's always um, very proud when she gets to give me my own advice. Okay, guys. Let me switch to a new scene. So that way I can take a look at what it is that you guys want to talk about. Okay, let me come up a little closer so I can take a closer look and see what you guys are saying. Let's see. Honeysuckle says, also I'm practicing by getting photo references, but I noticed my pencil is not a good quality. Any good recommendations? I missed out on your materials. Well, I usually don't use pencils for figure drawing. I really don't like it. The stuff that I like to use is actually a Caran d'Ache crayon. So here, I'll hold it up so you guys can see it. It comes like this, like it comes in different colors and I'll put it in the video description below, but I don't like pencil because it's too tight. I find that extremely difficult to work with. And so I tend to like having something that's a little bit more malleable. 10,000 Crows says, do you have any tips for when you really need to work on art, but you can't seem to get in the headspace at all? Yep, <laughs> that's like every day. It's really hard to get into the headspace. I think sometimes for me, this sounds really stupid, but it actually works. You just move your hand on a page. I'm not kidding. Like take a pencil and just move it in your sketchbook. Don't even try to draw anything, just move. Sometimes the motions alone are enough to wake you up. Or something that I've done sometimes is I have a studio playlist, which for me, it acts like a trigger. So when I hear that studio playlist, it's like you get in the mood. So sometimes that can be helpful as well. Salty Person says, for me, hands are fine sometimes, but feet are so weird. Feet are weird looking. You know what's weird looking? Okay, these are the body parts, in my opinion, that you guys should give up on making them look good because they won't. Okay, noses and feet. Those are two body parts that no matter what you do, they're always gonna look weird. And it is not up to you. It is because that's just the way they're structured. So don't worry about it if you're having trouble with that type of thing. Uh, 
there's somebody whose name is in Japanese, I think. I can't pronounce her name, but I'm going to answer your question. I have a pencil made fully of only graphite. Will that do? Yes, I like those way, way better. They're woodless pencils. And actually, if you guys go back a few days, I did a stream where I got to draw Benedict. Got to look at him for a long time. And I used woodless pencils and also a graphite stick, which I find much friendlier because the thin, thin tip of a pencil stresses me out. I feel really, really tight. So for me, it's nicer to have a blunter tool because for me at least, then I resist the temptation to really get into details and get tight. If there's an opportunity to do that, I will. But if I take it away by giving myself a super blunt drawing material, that usually fixes the issue. Let's see, Starving Artist says, notice Europeans use the word tone for light and dark and Americans use value but then use tone to describe color. What is it for you? Oh, wow, that's really confusing. Wow, and I'm sure we have a lot of people here who are not in America, so that makes sense. I mean, for me, when I say value, I'm talking about how dark something is. When I talk about tone, I'm talking about like filling something in, like shading. So I'm gonna talk to you guys today about shading versus lines, but yeah, sometimes I think People use English so differently that the terminology, I think, can get a little bit strange. So that's good to know because we have a very large international audience here at ArtProf and I don't want to disappoint you guys. So anyway, let's see. Um, in the chat, uh, Builder D says, I'd say if you can't find your crayons off and use pencil, but don't hold it like you write or you'll lock up. So hold very back end or overhand grip and move arms a lot. Yeah, that's great advice, Builder D, because you know something? If you hold it like a, like, let me just show you guys quickly. All I have is a marker. But if you hold it like this, this is a really tight grip and you're not going to loosen up. So if I was in some dimension of hell and they forced me to only draw with pencils for the rest of my life, I would hold the pencil like this because this way there's more opportunity for wrist action. And if you hold it like this, your wrist is pretty much locked into place. So that's very good advice, Builder D. Leslie Smith is saying, I have a canvas. I just play around with that ends up as an abstract after a while. That always warms me up. That's great advice. Yep. Annie Helgelson says, you have a recommendation for a larger drawing surface that's cheap, but still archival, unlike newsprint. I like Stonehenge a lot. Stonehenge is great because it comes in a lot of different versions. For example, you can get Stonehenge white, Stonehenge warm white. It also comes in colors and it's pretty durable, but it also doesn't cost a fortune. So I think Stonehenge is a pretty good thing for that. Okay, you guys ready? I'm starting to get my blood pumping. So I think I'm almost ready to do this again. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna get back into my drawing position. And I think now we're gonna go back and let's do some longer stuff because I really wanna to start to break down to you guys what I mean by balancing line and tone together. So let's do a longer one because a shorter pose, I can't really get into it very much. Okay, so let me pull up my slides and let's see who's up next. Ooh, Imogen Cunningham, really cool photographer who I, really did not know about until I was searching for these images. And I hope these photos are helping you guys see that you don't have to use those tacky reference photos that a lot of people have. There's so much good nude photography out there by all of these incredible photographers, Robert Maplethorpe, Alfred Seiglitz, Imogen Cunningham. These are all incredible people. They're all out there. So I recommend you guys check them out or Draw along with me. So many of you guys did that. And it was so fun for me afterwards to see how everybody else reacted to the same photographs. So draw along with me, it's super fun. Okay, let's take a look at Imogen Cunningham. Let me just make this a little bit bigger so I can see more. Okay, now what I wanted to talk to you guys about is I think what I typically see in terms of line and shading People think, okay, you do all the line and you finish it and then you color it in with tone to add shadows. I think that's a really bad idea because what you're doing 
is you're not letting the tone participate in articulating the form. The tone becomes very shallow. It just becomes a color element. It has nothing to do with the construction of it. And oh my God, you guys, I love tone. Like I love tone so much more than I love line. Line is fine. It's there. I'll use it because I know it's helpful, but oh, tone is just fantastic. So whenever I have an opportunity, if I can build a drawing through tone, I will. And so what this means for a lot of you guys with the technique I'm going to show you, you're going to have to introduce tone and lighting and shadow way sooner than you want to. You're going to have to do it at a point where you're going to look at me and you're going to say, I'm not ready. I need to do more lines. I need to articulate more. And I'm going to say, nope, put it in right now. And the drawing's going to be a mess, but it's going to teach you how to sculpt with the crayon as opposed to coloring in with the crayon. Okay, so let's take a look at Imogen Cunningham. And this one, let's do five, let's do 10 minutes because um, if you do five minutes, I won't have enough time to stop and explain. So let me just go in 10 minutes. Okay, here we go. Let's get started. Okay, now the beginning is exactly the same. I'm not gonna do anything differently in terms of major masses and getting in the center line, but you're gonna notice that I'm gonna introduce the tone way sooner than I did in the other pieces. Okay, this is a great pose. <laughs> this pose is so twisty and it's great. I love it. This is one of those poses where as an artist, you feel kind of guilty. <laughs> it's, it's like the pose is so good that you almost feel like the work has already been done for you. And so th this is really such a relief in a way. It's sort of like when you get a really good model, it's like the drawings almost draw themselves. It's really a great experience, but it's hard to find people who inspire you that way. I think it's just, you have to find the right combination. Okay, let's get the center line in. The center line has to be really good. If you don't have a good center line, the rest of it is not going to take care of itself. So if you're gonna prioritize anything in terms of the lines at this point, Prioritize the center line, which is right down here. And wow, there, oh, wow, do you see this? The shoulders are like really tilted. So actually this shoulder is all the way up here. And then the elbow is here. And then let's see, I guess the plane of the hand, let me move this over so you guys can see that a little bit better. There we go. There's the plane of the hand. And the head is like all the way, sorry, I think I drew it a little bit too big for the board. Let me draw it a little bit smaller. Here we go. Let's move down the neck, move down the head. Because you know what, you guys, you have to learn how to size your drawings. You can't just do the, oh, I drew it too big. Let's start over again. Don't do that, okay? A lot of my students try to do that. And I explain to them, you got to live with your marks. You got to be okay with these things and you got to know how to fix it, okay? It doesn't matter. It's a sketch. I mean, if this was a painting, I would definitely be making those changes. But if it's a sketch, I actually think it's good for you guys to see those mistakes. Let them stay there. It's like a reminder of all these parts of the process that you go through. You, you have to do that. So it's, it's not a bad thing to show mistakes in a drawing. I feel like that's how I learned. I feel like when I saw other people mess up, that's how I got better. I, I feel like it's depressing. You'd see these people who are just good at stuff all the time. I find it super depressing. Okay, this is too small. Okay, I definitely am like slowing down a lot, which is not good. So I'm gonna try to pick up the pace. It's just, I feel like my last one was so floppy and now I'm feeling insecure, which is really dumb because who cares? But you know, that's just <laughs> what happens. Tell me in the chat if you guys ever feel insecure when you're drawing, because I feel like that's my life. Like, when do I draw and not feel insecure? But then here's the thing, here's how you combat it. You end up telling yourself, you know what, that's dumb, shut up and just do it. And tell yourself that you kick butt and just, I am really good at this. Okay, screw this, kick some ass. Let's do it guys, you ready to kick some ass? We're gonna do it now. Because I'm over the whole questioning thing. I am totally gonna get back into this. Okay, I really screwed up the torso. It's like way, way too long. I know it's really tilty, but I think it's actually my board. I think if I tilt my board a little bit more. So actually, let's do this. Let's pull down the neck even more. 
<laughs> okay, does everybody see how many freaking times I have now drawn this figure? We're gonna move this shoulder all the way here. We're gonna put this shoulder over here and that is gonna pull, okay, that feels better to me. Okay, this is a mess and I know you guys probably feel like you don't know what the heck I'm doing right now, but too bad because I'm figuring it out and that's the most important thing that matters. See, this is the point in the process where you just, you just act silly. <laughs> it's just like, well, what other option do I have? It's so freaking hard. All right, this, no, 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 no. Okay, let's just get the plane of the hands coming down like that. Okay, whoa, that is way too high. Okay, because <laughs> what I just did is I looked at the backside and I looked at the arm and I saw that I put the arm a little bit too low. I'm not going for extreme accuracy. I mean, you guys will hear me say things like, oh, it's too high, it's too low. But I don't tend to pick too much, but I do like to be in the ballpark. For me, that is important. Okay, so now I really should, see, I did way too much line. I should not have done this much line. I really should have started the tone sooner. There we go. I can't even take my own advice. Okay, let's pretend I started the tone sooner, what I should have done. I should have done this. Take this, lock in as much tone as you possibly can. This figure has pretty dramatic shading on it, especially the head. The head is like really dark, geez. And then this whole lower half of the arm. Okay. Now I know what some of you guys are probably thinking, which is Clara, you just canceled out everything that you just did. Yes, I did, but you know something? I can bring it back. And I think a lot of figure drawing is resurrecting things, bringing things back, changing them, fixing them. Because now what I have is what I like to call a rug of tone. Here we go, rug, rug in parentheses, not parentheses, apostrophes, rug of tone. And this idea about a rug of tone is that you lay out a rug and then you put the furniture on top, okay? You don't put furniture down in a room and say, oh, I think I should put a rug in now. Like that's not gonna happen, okay? Because now that I have a rug of tone, I can go back in and I can bring back the center line. And actually now I'm feeling a little bit more confident about where I place things because it was such a mess before that now I feel like I'm gonna slow down a little bit and start to pull out some of this arm and get it better because like, gosh, I made a mess in this area. Ugh. At the very least, I wanna say, okay, here's the elbow coming in like that. We're gonna bring this back. And I think this is still too big. So even at this stage, I'm still fixing a lot of stuff. I mean, I think you guys can see how much like i'm moving everything up quite a bit and you know it's better because i really think i started way too large so i actually am still fixing a lot of things that were very problematic at the beginning okay that's starting to feel a little bit better to me in terms of scale if i had the opportunity i would get back and i would stand and look from really far away but can't do that without <laughs> making everything collapse in my stream setup let's get the brow in there and put in the nose. Oh shoot, that's still too big. Ugh. No, crap. All right, let's just give him a deltoid. All right, now I feel really crummy because I was like, I'm getting it together. It's starting to make sense. And now it doesn't anymore. <laughs> because, oh, this, oh, okay. That's the brachioradialis. Okay, and then that, okay, here is the elbow. There we go. All right, that looks terrible and that is way too big. All right, all right, hang on, we're gonna get there. At the very least, I'm just gonna put in the PSIS. Everybody remember these? The little dimples and I'm gonna put in the crease of the backside again so we can see it better. And so does everybody see how now what we're doing is we're building the line over the tone and then we can add tone again. So I'm gonna keep going on this. I really got to fix the head though, because you know, it's driving me crazy. I actually can't see the ear at all in this photo. So I'm just going to guess that it's about here because if this is the forehead, oh, the nasal, oh my God, the nasal bone's too high. Okay. Hang on. Let's put that down here. 
And then I think the nasal bone, what, it's like there? Yeah, it is. And then the hair, sorry, I know you guys can't see. I'll try to push this down a little bit better. Yeah, like that. Okay, that's a little bit better, sorry. Okay, here we go. Put that back. Okay, yeah, I think I, because what I'm looking for is the nose and where it lines up with the deltoid. So actually, I think the nose is even lower. Is that right? Jeez. Okay, that is definitely not where the ear is. The ear is not there, but that's okay. We're just going to approximate right now. I think that head is so gigantic. Oh my God. Okay, let's, let's just cut a little off that and let's start to go into the figure a little bit more because those PSISs are really handy. Let's get in some of the scapula. And I got to work down here. I, I'm not paying enough attention to the legs. Let's bring this up. And ugh, I totally lost the calf. That is not happening. Wait, is that? Mm, shoot. Okay, crap. Hang on. All right, let's get that gastrocnemius back. Put in the flexion fold. Maybe indicate a little bit of the knee. And this should be a lot darker. Oh, are you serious? Oh my God, like not even close. Let's see, Yellow Hat Arts says, do you recommend to draw on a larger scale? I see you do, can say that helps to loosen up. I'm feeling really sick today, but the stream is helping. Thank you. Well, I would say absolutely it helps to loosen up because if you guys are drawing really small, I think you're just gonna be sort of tight. It's not going to help you. And I know when I can wiggle around a lot more and I feel that I have the freedom to do that. Because have you guys ever done a figure drawing where all of a sudden you're drawing the foot and then you're like, oh no, I don't have enough room. That happens all the time. If you have a bigger sheet of paper, that's not an issue. You don't have to think about that so much. So I would definitely, if you can make the space to do that, I definitely would. Okay. Maria Kilson is saying, my work is usually all about lines. I have to tell myself to line the shadows in different tones. I think honestly that there's a lot of people who are just better at line. There are people who are better at tone. I'm a tone person, okay? I'm okay at line, but I'm not great. Like I know there are a lot of people who are just like, oh, phenomenal line work. And it just makes you so sad that you can't draw like that, but I think that's okay. I think some people have tendencies. I think that's fine. Pineapple Doodle Star says, I've started feeling that my drawings are way too simple. I don't know that that's always a bad thing, Pineapple, because I think simple can be very helpful. I think the issue is if you never move on from the simple, because what I started doing in the last minute of the drawing I was just doing is I noticed that I was starting to draw over lines I'd already drawn, and that's not a good thing, because that means that I'm not adding new information. I'm just going over information that's already there. So I think the important thing, it's not bad to be simple. It's just you have to keep improving upon that process. Anna Banana says, I feel like how my drawing turned out can really affect my mood, how I feel about myself for the rest of the day, since art is such an important piece of my identity. Yeah, I think that a lot of people, it's easy to put your self-worth into how you feel about the results about your pieces. And I do the same thing. I mean, I'm the biggest drama queen where I just am like so pissed at myself if something is not working out well. But you have to find a way to move on because if you can't move on, it can become really toxic really fast. And so for me, one solution that I have found does work very well is if you guys make a lot of work all the time, you will not be as precious about it. If you guys only draw once a week, you're gonna be really precious because that's the only drawing that you made all week and you're gonna put all your eggs in one basket. So make more drawings because that's gonna make you much less precious and less likely to invest like, oh my God, all my emotion into that one drawing, which is not fun. Megan LaCruz says, I love how these analogies help everything make sense. Well, good. I'm glad you like my silly analogies because it's the only way I can explain it sometimes without getting all technical. 
Annie says, I found using a timer that goes from zero to 10 instead of counting down from 10 to zero makes it less stressful and feels more like a helpful guide. That's a good point. I mean, I'm stressed no matter what. So <laughs> for me, it doesn't really matter. But anyway, Wen is saying, if you can't physically step away from your work while you're streaming, would it work to glance at how it looks on the camera just for a quick different perspective? It would accept that I'm convinced that there's some distortion in the camera angle as well, because the camera is not perfectly lined up and it just does not substitute real life. If this were real life, I'd be running to the other side of the room and looking at it up close and from far away multiple times. It's just not practical with the streaming right now. Jamie Jason says, my grandpa says, treat all lines you draw like 50 cents. Would you pay 50 cents extra for going over something? <laughs> I like that. That's great. I'm going to steal that from now on. I'm probably not going to remember it. But anyway, I love it. 10,000 Crows says, what else is there besides line and tone? Are these the only two basic components of a drawing? Are there more things like that? Oh, trust me, there's way more. <laughs> it's just that we got to start somewhere. And line and tone, I think, make the most sense to a lot of people. I think some of the other more specific pieces of content that I will eventually introduce to you guys, they're not as easy to visualize or you have to think about them in a certain way. I think most people, if you say, I'm gonna draw with lines or I'm gonna draw the shading, they pretty much understand what you're talking about. But if I talk to you guys about overlaps in muscle tone, you're not gonna understand what I'm saying. I have to like explain that to you for an hour. So I think it just makes a lot more sense. Okay, let's get back into the drawing. So let me pull up my drawing board. Now, here's what I wanna know from you guys. Do you want to see me develop this drawing further or do you want me to start another one? My feeling because of my stupid ego wants to finish this so it doesn't look totally horrible. But then again, maybe you guys will get more out of watching me doing drawings that are a lot less resolved. So tell me in the chat, should I continue this one? If I do, I'll probably work on it for like another five minutes or so or if you want me to start a new one. So, okay, looks like Denise and May and Ludwig and Slepnir. Oh, Slepnir's not agreeing. <laughs> Slepnir's saying start another one. We got, so, oh, you guys are really making this difficult for me. <laughs> Let's see. All right, I'm gonna finish this one. Well, I'm not gonna finish it. I'm just gonna work on it for like another let's say seven minutes. I think that's good enough, just so we see where it goes. And then I'll do some more. Okay, so let's get this started. Let's do seven minutes like that. And we're going to start up again, just so you guys can see where it's going. Because I know sometimes the short poses, they don't make a lot of sense in the beginning if you don't understand where the result is going to be. So here, I'm gonna to try to hold my board at a better angle so it looks a little bit less distorted. And let me just make my slide a little bit bigger so I can get into some of these details. Okay, here we go. What I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna look at it. I'm gonna, hmm. Oh God, the head is so big. Oh, okay, hang on. Let, let's just do a proportional check. I'm just looking. Oh my God, and the leg is so horribly small. Okay, I, I really got to fix the proportions first. Okay, let's do this. Let's just totally jump in and fix this head because it's not happening right now. Sorry, the angle is not quite perfect. Here we go. Okay, so I'm going to slow down way more than I think I should, but I, I really got to fix this. Like it's like beyond passable. <laughs> like it, we're like past the point of it's okay. You're just getting started. It's not that anymore. It's like, come on, get to it. Let's, let's really figure this thing out. Okay. I'm going to try to get in some of the more nuances in here, especially in the center line. I want to try to get in some of the more dramatic areas. So like in here, this, this figure has such a pronounced deltoid really want to get that a lot stronger. And then also this um, down here, the elbow, really important bony landmark to get in. 
Ooh, one of my favorite muscles, brachioradialis. We have not talked about that, but it's a really cool muscle. I like it. It's the only muscle in the arm, honestly, that I pay attention to. There's other muscles in the arm, but that really is the one that I think actually matters. I think the other ones get really confusing. I just want to give a little bit of an arm that doesn't look so bad. And we really need to make, okay, this piece of light is so important. Does everybody see how dramatic that is? And then this has to get, this has to get like really dark. Sheesh. Okay, here we go. Let's just really get aggressive here. Okay, this is like black. Yeah, okay. So you can see what I'm doing is I'm, I'm holding it so that those are the kinds of marks I'm getting. And that's because this is sharp like this. You could use a knife or something, but I just do this and that works out a lot better. Okay, I really gotta, this leg not happening. It's hard because the leg sort of goes off the page in the photo, it's really hard to see. I can see a little bit of the Achilles tendon. And then this is the gastrocnemius, it's a little bit darker there, but I'm really like losing the heel. Yeah, the heel is like off the page. Okay, I'm not gonna do that. All right, let's get back into the back because, oh, okay, let's block this in harsher. And you know, the face really has to just be dark. Maybe that'll make it look better if I just make it black. <laughs> like it'll just be really dark and then nobody can see all the stuff I messed up. Okay, uh, let's see. We gotta fix this arm. Th this arm is so, like, look at that deltoid. It's just like popping out. But there's a very dramatic amount of shadow there. This is also very dark in here as well, here as well. Now I think I'm getting too dark, but you know, I got to build it up. Okay, now let's go back in and let's redefine some of these lines. So they're more dramatic because I think it was not happening before. Okay, there's a tricep. Nice tricep guy. <laughs> this is a great tricep. Okay. And I'm just trying to, yeah, th this really should be a lot darker. I think that I did not give that enough contrast. Now it's like really dark. Okay, hang on. This really would take me a while to fix, but um, I'm just gonna go for it. So it's all this matter of layering if I had more time, I'd be able to get something that's a little bit more even. Like you can see here, it's quite grainy and I would have to spend a lot of time actually doing that. But I'm not worried about that because really I'm just trying to establish the relationships. I mean, this drawing's not gonna be even close to being done. No, not even close. Definitely not for sure. Okay. Oh shoot, I think I made that way too long. Oh, crap. Okay, focus. You got two minutes. You can do this. You can do this. You can. Really? I think I can. Can I? I don't know. <laughs> Let me know if my inner monologue is either entertaining or familiar <laughs> or both, whichever one it is. <laughs> you know what it is? I think you guys, it's just at a certain point, you draw so much, you've logged so many hours drawing it just stuff doesn't bother you anymore. <laughs> like it's just one of those things. It's it sort of becomes like breathing after a little while. Okay, this this head is not good. This head is really bothering me. Oh, and I feel I feel like the drawing is getting really stiff. I mean, part of that is the tone. Once the tone starts to define itself, then it's a whole other can of worms that you're having to deal with. And I think I'm sort of losing the center line a little bit. So let me get in there. I lost my posterior, superior iliac spine. So I want that to be more dramatic. All right, here we go. 38 seconds. Yes, I don't like this. Yes, I'm very unhappy. Yes, I wanna work on it more so it looks better, but I'm not gonna, I'm gonna resist that temptation. Okay. You know, if anything, let's just give this a little bit more depth, this area in the middle. It just needs to be a little more even. Let's just get it to group. 
Because at the end of the day, what you want your shadows to do, you just want them to make sense. So we understand the lighting situation. And sometimes that is better than the specifics. Oh. Whew. Here we go. All right, let me see what you guys are thinking. And then we'll do another one. All right. Let's see what you guys are saying. Megan is saying, there's almost a grace and elegance in your furious scribbling and cussing <laughs> sign of a true artist. <laughs> well, this is not quite the set of words I'd be using if I wasn't on YouTube. Use your imagination. <laughs> Let's just say, um, yeah, I don't hold back in real life, but this is YouTube and I don't want to be demonetized. So you're not getting the real Professor Lee version. <laughs> Maria says, it will take me a while to fix, she says, with an incredible result already. Self-critic, thou name is artist. <laughs> Everything's relative, you guys. It's like, for me, it's so frustrating to not be able to draw every day. It drives me up the wall because I just have so many other things to do that drawing, honestly, it's terrible, but it just does not get prioritized a lot in my day. And then it's sort of like, it's sort of like if you were a really good volleyball player in high school, which I was, by the way, I was a hardcore volleyball player in high school. And then it's like, you don't play volleyball for 20 years. And then you're like, I used to be really good. What's wrong with me? <laughs> it's sort of like that. Maybe not that dramatic, but it's like knowing that you're not performing at the level that you know you're capable of. That, that's what I think is really hard for me, actually. Daniel Castelli says, don't be so hard on yourself. It's fantastic. You guys are very nice. You really are. But I'm telling you like it is. This is exactly what goes through my head when I'm drawing. And I think people need to see that drawing is messy. Drawing is not perfect. And it's challenging. It, it's not something that you just wake up and do in three seconds. I think a lot of younger artists think it is that way. And it just is not at all, you guys. So don't stress when you're having a hard time. Builder D is saying, I think you're doing fine, but on days you just can't get hands or mind to work right. How do you make good use of scheduled figure drawing time? I mean, I think the thing is you guys, that journey in your head, the fact that you're in the mindset of drawing, that is valuable. OK, so you may feel that, oh, sheesh, I didn't get a single good drawing out of today's session. You had the experience. Drawing is an experience. And I think that, unfortunately, a lot of us, myself included, we can get really focused on the product way too much to the point that it's a real detriment. And so I guess when I am drawing from a model, I don't really think about the result as much as I think about just like being there. It's like the experience, okay? So let's say it's like you play a baseball game, you didn't win, but you got to play a game. Like that's cool. We used to do in high school, we used to do scrimmage games all the time for the volleyball team. And I always really liked playing those because there was no result, nobody won, you just play to play. And so that's, I guess, how I would think about it is that there's no particular end result that you should be having. But the very least, you can step away and say, you know, I got to draw today. That's a win. That's a total win, you guys, especially for somebody like me, because I just don't spend enough time doing this at all. Somebody is saying all it needs now is classical music in the background. Well, you guys can do that yourselves because I am not adding one more tech issue <laughs> to my setup because, wow, this is really complicated to set up. OK, let's see what else people are saying. Lisa H says, thanks for sharing. The questioning method is very helpful. And wow, we have a lot of new names in here that I've never seen before. Product Purs Art. We've got Craftastic A Beer, Ludwig van Beethoven. Very cool. Let us know in the chat if this is your first live drawing stream that you've seen us do here at Art Cross. I know some of you guys are awesome and you're our regulars, but I love it when new people find us and tell us if you found us recently or many years ago, because I've had so many people who are like, yeah, I found you last week. 
it's like, wow, that's pretty cool because we're a lot better now than we were three years ago. So if you're catching us now, you're catching us at a point where we actually have a clue about what we're doing. It's way better than it was a few years ago. Um, Ripple of Aqua says, do you ever use yourself as a reference, taking multiple photos and poses or just from your point of view? I don't anymore, but when I was in art school, all the time. I would get into the craziest poses that I wanted to do for myself for my homework. And I would put mirrors in funny places and I got some pretty cool drawings out of them. I should show them to you guys at some point because I still have them all in my computer. But yeah, I used to do that all the time. I don't do it so much now because the work I'm doing is not figurative in the sense of like full body. Like I tend to just work on the face and recently I've been working on images of elderly figures. And so I couldn't really use myself for that reason. But in the past, absolutely. That is definitely something I have done in the past. Adam Ross saying, I'm here for the first time, found you a couple of months ago. Very cool. Well, welcome to the stream, Adam Ross. Okay, guys, let's do another one. So let me get back into my drawing position and we will see who is up next out of our established photographers. Okay, so we just looked at Imogen uh, Cunningham, and I think up next is going to be Francesca Woodman. Okay, this is a intense photo. And I feel bad because I had to crop it because of the sizing. I didn't want to show the whole thing, but you guys should look up Francesca Woodman later because Oh my God, her work is so intense. It's really, really emotional. So I would recommend you guys look up these photographers later because wow, they're amazing. Okay, let's take a look at Francesca Woodman. Okay, let me just make my image a lot bigger. And um, let's make this one, how about, let's do a 15 minute pose. That way I can go from beginning to end without stopping and let's see now that I've woken up, maybe I can start to actually focus. See, here's the thing, guys. I've been drawing for about an hour now. I am just starting to feel like I'm sort of ready and sort of sharp enough now to be really paying attention. It takes that long. And so for me, ideally, if I have a model that I'm drawing from, I really need two hours minimum to get anywhere because the first half hour is throwaway. The second half hour, you're getting close. I think this is the point now where you start to feel like you're actually back into it. Okay, so let's go in here. Let's do 15 minutes like that. And we're gonna start with Francesca Woodman. Okay, now I cannot be tempted by the, oh my gosh, I have 15 minutes, I can slow down. Don't do that, okay? I'm gonna treat this as if I have two minutes because I don't want to lose the gesture. You don't want to lose that spontaneity. Okay, let me just make sure I size her. Okay, so that way you guys can see everything. Okay, this is a new start and I, I have to go back to where I was. Center line is about there. Really different pose this time because the pelvis is so much bigger from this point of view and the legs are pretty substantial. Actually, let me move her up a little bit. We're going to put the back up here and then we're going to put the pelvis here. Does everybody see how much time I'm spending just trying to place things like that really takes a while. It's not something you can do quickly. And I think it's worth being flexible and not just saying, oh, I got to start over. I made it too big. I, I think it's a lot better. And with painting, it's even better. Painting, you just draw over it. It's great. Okay. I was getting a little too slow. Let's at least block in at least an approximation of the legs. This is such a beautiful photo. I mean, it feels very emotional and, and almost tragic the way that it's done. That's another thing that I like about a lot of these photos is I, I feel that I'm not just drawing an object. They're, they're such emotional uh, photographs that I'm drawing from right now. And I hope some of you guys are drawing with me and that you tag us Art Prof Share. Make sure you guys do that because then I'll take a look at what you guys have been making on Instagram, which is super, super fun and always really inspiring for me to see. So I just love that. Okay, let's get in because the, the thigh is like super, oh, I'm spending too much time 
on the contour. Okay, hang on. I, I totally ignored the arm. Okay, let's get the arm in there and this big mop of hair, which is gorgeous. I'm just gonna block in. Okay, see where I am now, guys? This is where I should have stopped in the last drawing and added tone. Okay, I'm gonna do a little bit more on the feet because the feet, at the very least, I need to see the Achilles tendon, the ankle bone, the heel, and then the mass of the foot. And then this leg is pretty dramatic, like this gastrocnemius over here really tilts quite a bit. And then here's the heel and is that the foot? No, I think that's a little bit, no, I think I made it too dramatic. I think it should come in like that. Yeah, I think, here we go, like that. Okay, that's a little bit better. I'm gonna just take a quick glance before I jump into the tone. I feel like this is, nah, this is too high. Okay, too high and not broad enough. So let, let's work on her center line again. Center line should be more like this. Oh, the deltoid. I put it way too far to the right. Okay, that's why I'm not getting it. Okay, hang on. I think I'm, okay, that's the deltoid. Here's, okay, there we got a little bit more structure. I think that's starting to make a little bit more sense. Here's the other side of the rib cage. There's the pelvis. All right, is that? Mm. Oh, wait, we also need that. Okay, here's an overlap. You guys will see this. This is something in front of something else. Anytime I see an overlap, I always try to emphasize it as best as I possibly can. Now this area here, I know there's a kneecap there, but it's really hard to see. And so I'm just gonna show a little bit of a form here because I know this is the gastrocnemius and this is the Achilles tendon and that is the calf muscle. Okay, let's see. That's, that's getting there. It's still... I think I elongated it a little bit. I think it's still, maybe, maybe this should come down. Maybe, maybe huh. I think I gotta just try it. <laughs> Honestly, I don't know until I actually do it. Okay, actually, okay, this has to come down and now this has to come down. Okay, and then that comes down, all right. All right, I totally do not know what's going on in that drawing, but that's okay. All right. This is now where I'm gonna do the shading. And so again, it's this motion. Remember the rug of tone, that's what you're looking for. Okay, so the rug of tone, in this case, it's all on the right-hand side. That's where all the shadows are. So I'm gonna just really quickly, very simple, big shape of tone. You're not trying to do subtlety here. You're not trying to get very precise with the shading because honestly, that's not really worth it right now. You have not done enough to be picking at your drawing like that. Okay, and actually the hair, oh my God, this hair is so, so beautiful. And I gotta, mm, I'm not feeling great about this outline. So actually, uh, let's see, we have to get that deltoid and then, Shoot, okay, hang on, hang on. I think I got it, <laughs> I think so. Okay, now, I, okay, I'm just gonna go to town on this hair because it's such a major part of this. Here we go. I'm not gonna make it all dark yet. I will eventually, but for now, I just wanna put it in place. So I guess it goes a little bit past the knee and then something kind of like that. See, this, this contour, this and this, to the side of the leg, this is like totally black. So I'm just gonna put something in there just to hold the place. I, I totally need to work on the contour a little bit more. Let's just try that, just for now. Okay, so does everybody see how simple the tone is? I'm gonna do another pass because actually it's a little bit light for me right now, and this section should be really dark. I'm not gonna go that dark yet. I just wanna bulk it up so I'm not confused when I'm looking at it. Okay, let's see. And again, I'm sure you guys are thinking to yourselves, you ruined all the lines. You can't see anything now. Yes, that's true, I can't. But I do know where the figure is. 
Okay, there we go. And actually, I am going to add a little bit of tone down here at the bottom because there is quite a bit of tone on the floor and I feel like it's really weird to just draw nothing around those feet. So let's try that. Okay, now we got seven minutes left. Let's go back in, this is the fun part. <laughs> this is the fun part where you get to really like, ooh, put down the strokes. Does anybody else here really like drawing the crease in the backside? Cause I do, it's very satisfying. <laughs> I don't know, it's like, it's, it's so straightforward and it can be very elegant sometimes. So please don't take that out of context, by the way. <laughs> I've said some questionable things in some of my figure drawing classes based on uh, the, the, the body part we were talking about. So you gotta be careful what you say. People don't quote you out of context. Okay, here we go. Um, actually, I probably should switch crayons because that crayon is starting to get really soft. So this is what I do. I always peel the paper off the crayon like this because then it's a lot easier for me to draw with. And I'm just gonna even it out here. So that way I know it's gonna make a nice area of tone. Okay, and this, this crayon right now, it's a lot blunter than the last one I was using, but I actually think that's better. I actually think that's gonna help me a lot because then I'm gonna be less picky about how things look. Okay, guys, it's time to pull out the real fire. It really is. Let's just do this now. You ready? Okay, let's do it. <laughs> because I am tired of not doing a drawing that I'm excited about. I mean, I am excited about it. I'm just saying, like, I want to feel good. Don't you? Everybody wants to feel good. Who doesn't want to make good drawings? Of course you do. That is totally natural. You just can't let it, like, paralyze you. I think that's the difference. Like, it's totally fine, you guys to want to do what everybody wants to do well, but you can't let it keep you from trying out something that might actually be extremely helpful. So that's the important thing. Okay, this is starting to get fun. See, this is my comfort zone. Doing tone, oh, I love tone. Tone is just the greatest thing. Okay, we have to get this pelvis a little bit better defined. And actually the, the center line as well. And you can see a little bit of the shoulder blade. Let's get this nice and dark. And maybe a little bit of the shadow on the side of the arm, like this. Okay. All right, and this, this should get, oh shoot, I think I made that a little bit too dark. Crap, okay, hang on. Uh, let's bring that back. Okay, here we go. Okay, and now here there's like this really dramatic, like crease and the side of that leg. This is like very dark. This. All right. I know I'm really going to start to dig in. Not that I feel that confident about it, but I, I just need something more solid to work with. And I feel like what I have right now does not feel that solid. And so this is going to help me just nail a couple things down, hopefully. Oh, the foot is so, see, feet are weird. You know what I'm saying? Like the foot, it just always looks weird. Like no matter what I do, it always looks weird. It's really hard to get out of that. Okay. Yeah, see, I feel like I'm gonna be disrespecting Francesca Woodman, the photographer, if I don't like fully capture the pathos of this photograph. I have to, I have to give it justice because it's such an amazing photo and I don't want to just do some dorky drawing of it. It would make me feel really bad for Francesca Woodman. Okay. Um, the heel, you know what, here I'm actually going to go in and I'm going to darken because there's sort of this like shadow that comes out around there. So let's make this more dramatic, get some marks going that way. So at the very least, she looks like she's actually standing somewhere. Um, yeah, she needs more going that way. Like maybe a little bit of negative space there will help me. Oh crap, I feel like oh, this foot is no good. Let's, let's just really, I feel like it has to be good. It's my final drawing of the stream. <laughs> This is my only chance to redeem myself. <laughs> okay. Oh, 
this is okay here now th now i can do this okay i've been waiting to do this but i was holding off a little but now i get to do it oh yay this is like yummy this part where you get to just like fill tone totally unabashedly and you're like oh i deserve this i spent all that time and i built up my major masses and i found my center line in that moment and all those structures it's leading all up to this this is so satisfying. That's kind of like what this is right now. <laughs> okay. Still need more here. No, this. Okay, I'm losing the center line. Sorry, my drawing is like shaking the camera. Okay. Yeah, this, this needs to get... Oh, okay, this. Th this side, okay, it's too linear. This has to be more substantial. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna do this. Oh man. All right, let's define this better because I feel like I really lost that. That did not happen. Now let's get the shadows to group more. So what I'm doing right now is I'm trying to just fill these larger spaces. Oh my God, I have one, I gotta do the hair. The hair is so amazing and I have to do a good job of the hair. See, guys, that was a death wish. What I just gave myself, telling myself, you have to do a good job. That was bad. Don't do that. I don't recommend doing that. That is a recipe to be very disappointed in yourself. So don't do that. But I do love like the texture in the hair. So let's just have a lot of fun with that. Like th this, this to me is like the, the coolest thing. It's just these strokes. Getting to do strokes like this in the context of a figure drawing to me Oh, greatest thing ever. So you know what? Even if this drawing doesn't end up looking good, I had a lot of fun making it. I had a lot of fun looking at the tone and building it up. And now I feel like I'm just getting started. And of course, <laughs> I'm almost done. <laughs> so, okay, let's, let's put in a couple more of these little tiny sections. Make this a little bit darker. Give it like another pass back here because I do think... This could be a little bit more dramatic than I have. It might be too dramatic for the photo, but that's okay. That's fine. I don't think that is the whole point of what we're doing. Even though I think some people might get on me for lack of accuracy, I don't really care. <laughs> so too bad. All right, maybe a little more darkness up here. Some more marks to show hair. And I think we're going to have something. Whew. Okay, there we go. All right, guys, let's see what's going on in the comment section. What did you guys think? How did I do? Let's take a look. Okay. Pineapple Doodle is asking, is it bad if I only draw cartoons? Well, Pineapple, I don't know what type of cartoons you're talking about, if you're doing character design or caricatures or whatever. However, I will tell you that people who draw cartoons, those are the people who are obsessed with drawing from life. They really are. I know that seems very strange, but it's true. I had this friend I went to art school with. He wanted to work for Disney. He was so into cartoons and animation. And that guy drew so much. All the time, he went to every single open figure drawing class. And you know what? He's a really, really good artist because of that. He can draw anything. So I really think that if you want to draw cartoons, you want to get better, draw from life. It will really help you a lot. Do just your drawings. I mean, I used to fight this guy at open drawing because he only wanted to do gesture drawings like two minute poses because he like had to focus on all of his just drawing skills and i was always like but please can we do like a 10 minute pose so yeah it, it's really really helpful if you want to do cartoons drew bigelow says first time catching a stream live working my way through the anatomy for artists playlist it's nice to see how to apply all that new anatomy information. Yep, and when the drawings get longer, I'll be able to get really specific. I'm not doing that right now because I don't think I've established enough yet the fundamentals with you guys. Once I've done that, we will get into like the 
really hardcore nitty gritty stuff. Slepnir says, I look at things as a process, accept those things that don't succeed. I try to learn what went wrong. Exactly. That's totally healthy. That's the way to go about it because you can't keep punishing yourself for not doing great all the time. Lisa says, I'm loving the crayon. The texture is fantastic. And Keith says, you did really well, at least better than me. I don't know about that. I haven't seen your drawings. Um, Light Light says, I like that you filled up the form and the legs without relying on just drawing the contours. Makes it really dramatic and gives it a lot of depth. You know what? That is exactly what I was trying to teach you guys this stream. Thank you so much, Light Light. Basically, what I wanted you guys to see in the drawing session today is that you don't need an outline everywhere. You just need it in a couple of places. And that's what I see a lot is people overdo the outline. And you will find that you can probably in your figure drawings, get rid of 50% of the outlines and construct the rest of it with shading and it's gonna work better. And so you'll see that's the rationale for introducing the tone earlier. Because if you wait too long, by that point, the line is so well established that the tone has nothing to do. It's like you show up and you're like, oh, well, I can't do anything now because you did everything. So it's kind of like um, when I yell at my husband for not doing the dishes and then I do it in anyway, and he's like, I couldn't do it. You did it before me. I'm like, sorry, <laughs> can't take it. Um, let's see. KK Tammy says it looks great. I'm curious, why do you set time limits? That's a great question. I think that one of the reasons I do it is so I have a sense of pacing. I know when I'm spending too long on something. I know when I need to pick up the pace. And honestly, I love the time limits. Like if you guys told me, okay, Clara, just work on this as long as you want. It's not as fun. I know that sounds weird because a lot of people would think, oh, well, isn't it better to just have the freedom of drawing however long or short as you want? Not really. I like getting my butt kicked <laughs> to draw. It's like having that extra little kick to keep you going. I find it very inspiring and fun. Some people find it stressful. I happen to really thrive on that quite a bit. So it's not for everybody, but I find it very helpful in terms of keeping track. Jessica is saying, I can't comprehend how fast the figure is finished. Any advice to improve on figure drawing? I would say, Jessica, draw from life, guys. Even if it's a family member reading a book or looking at their phone or playing video games. I drew my nephew drawing, playing video games. He did not move. Like he was just like sitting there like this for like an hour. It was great. He was an excellent model. So draw from life, you guys. I can't stress that enough. I know it's hard right now because obviously with the quarantine, there's a very limited number of options. Like, especially if you don't live with a lot of people, it's not easy, but that I think is my best advice is just, or if you can't draw other people, draw yourself. That's another great option because you're always there. You're not going to flake out because you don't feel like it. Anna Maria says you did great, wonderful drawing, but you did also make us less experienced artists feel better seeing how much a very experienced art teacher as yourself struggled to get it right. Yep. It, it is not easy, you guys. I mean, you have to push yourself and you have to continually try. I, I can't just show up and be like, whoop, there we go. Like, it's not like that. And you know something? I don't want it to be like that, okay? I know that sounds weird. I know it sounds strange for me to go on and on about, this is driving me crazy, but I love it. I know that sounds really strange, but I just feel like if I got to a point where making a figure drawing was an automatic process for me and I knew exactly how things were going to go and what the results were going to be, I would not want to do it anymore. It would be so boring. It would just be like a factory where you're just punching out the same thing over and over again. It's not fun. Light Light is saying, for your current work on elderly figures, do you take any influence from Hyman Bloom's work on similar subject matter? You know, I have seen Hyman Bloom's work and actually I saw it in person at the Danforth Museum in Massachusetts many years ago. I didn't actually look at his work directly and I do like his work. He's not my favorite artist necessarily, but I think definitely for sure, if you guys look up Hyman Bloom, you will see there is a little bit of a relationship between the way that I work because he's very expressionistic. 
in terms of the way that he paints. So he's a great example. I should talk about him more because Hyman Bloom is an artist that I think is really under the radar. A lot of people don't know about him. And so if you guys don't know, take a look at Hyman Bloom because he's really fantastic. All right, guys, I'm going to head over to Discord now. So if you guys want to join me on Discord for the next little bit, I'm happy to answer any other questions. I know there are a lot of comments. Thank you so much, Dorinka. You did an amazing job sending me all of the comments. Check out ourprof.org. Lots of goodies waiting for you guys there. Subscribe to our channel and join the Art Prof family. And as always, thank you so much to our top Patreon supporters who make all of this possible. Thank you to all of you guys for watching the stream egging me on so that way I don't feel like such an idiot talking to myself for an hour on YouTube. You guys are great. You've got wonderful comments. Everybody, please stay safe. I will see you next time.